Hello, hello. Well, I have another solo episode for you today, and I'm kind of enjoying these solo episodes. So, um, you know, when I first launched the podcast, I had so many interviews pre-scheduled that you probably noticed if you've been with me from the beginning. And thank you, by the way, um, if you have, there was a ton of interviews and I've got more of those coming, but I also really just enjoy the opportunity to you know, share with you some of what I'm learning, what I think could be valuable. So let me know if you have a strong preference for solo episodes versus interviews. You know, this is really about what's most of service to you. Um, but, you know, in today's episode, I was thinking, you know, as I record this, it's the end of 2019. And I thought, gosh, it would be really valuable, you know, not just hopefully for you, but also for me to look back and think about what have been my biggest lessons of this year. You know, it's the end of a year, it's the end of a decade. Um, and I feel like this year so much has changed for me. And it's been a year of some of my biggest highs and also my lowest lows. I don't know if yours has been that way or not. Uh, but it's been a year of so much growth and so much learning that honestly, it was hard to distill it down into three, but I really took what are the three biggest life lessons, things that I've learned that I think would help you um, as you go into 2020 and look to uplevel your business and your life. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. So here's the first one. Lesson number one, everything is happening for you. Okay. Everything is happening for you. Now, what I will say is that this year that did not always feel that way. It didn't always feel that way. And, you know, as I look back at about the past, let's see, really 18 months, but there was a span of about 12 months from the summer of 2018 until let's call it spring of 2019 that I called my year of three deaths, which I know sounds like a, a downer, but um, here's what happened. And uh, you know, some of you know this, some of you may not, if you're kind of new to the show, but the first thing that happened was um, May of 2018. I had a very unexpected exit from an international um, coaching firm where I was a partner. And it was very fast, very unexpected, um, felt like a massive upheaval in my life. And it really felt like the death actually of an identity. So along with that exit, one of the things that was part of my deal was that I removed basically any sort of content I had created online um, about sales, which was my former industry. And I'd been very intentional um, for years before then about building a strong brand in the sales coaching space. And I had podcasts, I was doing daily videos um, you know, I had a huge client network, team network, friend network. It was like, that was my life and my identity. And it went from feeling like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm in demand. I'm making a big impact. I'm living my dream life. I'm making great money to all of a sudden overnight that changed. And I literally felt like I was invisible, like I was a ghost. And it was the, it really felt like a death of an identity because I no longer knew what I was going to be known for and how I was going to help people, what my career was going to be, um, you know, who my friends were going to be like, everything changed so fast. The second thing that happened was, um, shortly after that, about a month after that, I experienced the death of a friend and this friend was Greg Heyer. He was um, the co-host of a podcast that I used to host along with Martin Brosman. And then Greg was our other co-host and Greg was like a big brother to me. And it happened really fast. He was 39, died in his sleep, you know, father of five kids. And it was super unexpected. And at the time I was, how old was I? 32? Yeah, I was 32 at the time. And oh gosh, time flies. And I remember thinking, wow, like, if I had seven years left to live, what would I want my life to be about? So those two things, as painful as they were, the death of the career and the death of my friend, really got me thinking about what do I actually want my life to be about? What do I want my brand to be about? How can I make a greater impact in less time? Which, as you notice from the title of this podcast, actually helped really birth 
the idea for this new brand, Instant Impact, which is really about how can we make a greater impact in less time in our business. And I think the number one way to do that is through generosity. It's through giving more of yourself, whether sharing tip videos on social media, whether making strategic introductions, whether um, showing up more fully as yourself in your content that you're creating and not being afraid to shine and not being afraid to stand out. And I'll tell you, when I first started thinking about creating a brand around this topic, it was scary. And I'd been so safe in my bubble, in my box of sales tips that felt very comfortable. I mean, even today it would feel super comfortable to do it. And it's like, I have to force myself <laughs> to get out of my comfort zone and talk about these bigger topics of, um, I mean, even just this podcast, like the biggest lessons of 2019, there's some big life stuff in here that I'm going to share. And it really has been a stretch for me to start talking and having a bigger conversation, but I also really desperately wanted it. So as painful as those two things were, and I'll get into the third in a moment, they really, really helped me, I think, step into a bigger role, a bigger brand, a bigger conversation. It also put me on track to partner up with some of my former colleagues from our old company. We started this company called Brand Builders Group, which has done phenomenally. I mean, thanks, it's like, thanks to all of you. Thanks to God. Thanks to the blessings that have come in. We hit seven figures in eight months. It's really skyrocketed. We've grown the business so fast. Our clients are exceptional. And none of that would have ever happened if I'd been at the old company. And then the third thing that happened, and this was honestly by far the hardest. So I didn't know if I was going to have a hard time talking about it. And apparently I am. Um, but I think a lot of you have experienced this and it's a big piece of my story now. So I'll share. Um, my husband and I had been trying to get pregnant for about a year and a half. So ever after we got married, we wanted to get pregnant and start a family. So we've been trying for about a year and a half. And in January of 2019, I found out I was pregnant and it was so exciting. Um, it was the biggest blessing I could have imagined. And in that time, so much started happening. I made, I put so many changes into place so fast in my life. The house that we were in, that we were renting at the time, I knew it wasn't the type of house I wanted to raise a baby. And so literally, I think it was in two weeks, we found a house and closed on it. Um, it was like my dream house. It's exactly what I wanted, exactly what I'd been envisioning. We just happened to find it um, because of the fact that I had been working and running my own company and then hadn't been working for a while. Really, we shouldn't have even qualified for the loan at the time, but everything just happened and fell into place. Um, you know, my mortgage lender was amazing. I'm not going to give him a shout out here. I don't know what magic he worked, but he was great. Message me privately if you need someone really good. Um, but we moved into our dream house. I also, um, at the time, so much of the money I was making was one-to-one -one services where I had to be present to, um, to make money. And I realized, okay, if I've got a baby coming in eight months, I need to have residual income and I want to make more. You know, I've been doing the six figure thing for years, very comfortable at that level, happy at that level. But I really decided this is a time where I want to up level and step up and start generating more to be able to have financial relaxation for my family, to be able to have financial freedom, to um, just have more room in my life for family and for expanding. And so I've been following a certain coach online for years. I've been thinking about working with her, but had never taken action on it. And it was just like, boom, yes, let's do it. It was such an easy decision. So I signed up for this coaching program that has really been phenomenal for me. And I'll talk more about it in the podcast, but um, all of these changes happen really fast. And then about a month after we found out we were pregnant, so we were maybe seven weeks in, it was really early, um, I miscarried. And that was so hard. And for those of you who have gone through this and, you know, I'm getting teary talking about it. Um, I didn't realize how common it was. I know just now talking with people, um, so many of you have been through this and my heart just goes out to you if you have. And that also felt like the death of an identity. I had gotten so excited about being a mom and my head was so wrapped around it. And obviously, you know, we bought the house, we'd put so much energy and effort into it. And all of a sudden it was like, 
who am I now? I, I don't know if you've experienced this, if you have ever experienced the loss of a, a pregnancy or a baby, but it's like you, for me personally, I couldn't imagine who I was without that. And it had been such a short amount of time, but I had so quickly gotten my identity wrapped up in that. And it was a really, really, really hard loss. And with that said, part of what I've learned, and I think we don't know the answers for everything until, you know, until we get them down the road, um, whenever we transition, you know, hopefully we get some answers then, but I really see everything that's happened in this year, even those, those three deaths as things that have put me on such a different path than I was on before. And as challenging as every upheaval was, the blessings that came into my life as a result are incredible. And whatever you're going through right now, sometimes I think we have to be ripped away from things and it, it can feel really hard. Um, it felt like I was being forcibly ripped away from some things and maybe you're going through that too. You know, we can get so stuck in our comfort zones and we can get so stuck in what's natural and normal to us. And sometimes it's like the universe has a much bigger plan for you or a much different plan for you. And if you've been getting hints and whispers and you haven't been listening or you haven't been acting on them, um, sometimes we get a big knock in the head. <laughs> and I think that's some of what happened for me this year. And looking back at the path and, and but the blessings that have happened as a result, um, I wouldn't trade it as, as strange as that is to say. I mean, obviously out of everything, I, I so wish that that child had, um, had been born, but I also know there's a reason why. And so I just look at what's happened in my life as a result of the fact that you know, my husband and I are in our dream home now. Um, I've been in this coaching program, which has helped me, you know, grow my business, meet so many incredible female entrepreneurs around the world, travel the world. Um, I've doubled my income every quarter. I grew a team. You know, when I left my old company and started new, I went from having a team and having support to literally being back to doing everything on my own. And up until um, February of this year, I was still doing that. And I was getting, I was getting to the point where I was just struggling with my hours, with the, you know, the content I was putting out. It was a lot of work. And I went from having no team to having a team of, I think I've got five or six now, um, which is amazing. And I feel so supported. And the other thing is I now have the right systems and structures in place so that when we do expand our family, I'm so much more ready. And this is something my husband and I have talked about a lot is gosh, you know, at the time we clearly weren't really that ready, which is why we were scrambling so much. And now we're really in a place where we feel ready. We feel like we've got everything in place. Um, I mean, even all the way down to the car, like one of the things on my vision board this year was I wanted a certain type of SUV. And that was something I completed in third quarter. And so like, I've got my mom car now, I'm ready for it, ready for kids. And it's going to be such an easier transition. So just know that however hard whatever you're going through right now may feel like, and even though it may not feel like it, I promise it is happening for you. And one of the best things that I've learned to say to myself when something hard is happening is I'm thrilled this is happening because. I'm thrilled this is happening because. So shout out to my mentor who taught me this. Um, it's really, and it can be hard to figure out at the beginning what that thing is. But um, the more you can say it, the more you'll realize, you know, I'm thrilled this is happening because there's this lesson that I needed to learn. I'm thrilled this is happening because even though I don't want to admit it, this relationship has been toxic and it's been time for me to leave. I'm thrilled this is happening because, you know, this revenue stream is no longer working and it's going to force me to get creative and figure out how am I really being called to be of service in the world. So use that to help yourself you know, kind of lift out of whatever negative situation you may feel like you're going through and it's going to help you so much. Okay. So number one, everything is happening for you. My number two lesson has been that you don't actually have to hustle so hard to get results. Now I know I'm probably going to offend all of my hashtag hustle people out there. And if I'm offending you, it is what it is. Um, I used, I used to be that way. I came from a very, very, very um, structured, driven, 
background, like the way I had always gotten success in business was having every minute of my calendar scheduled and grinding and getting, you know, four to five hours of sleep and pushing and hustling. And I did achieve results, but I also put major wear and tear on my body. And I was so against anyone who was like, just sit back and receive and let, you know, let the universe work for you and let things come to you. I was always like, gosh, that's so weak. But I'll tell you what, I've really changed my mind on that this year. And part of it has been, I've really started to study the differences in masculine versus feminine energy. And whether you were born or identify as a man or a woman, um, we all have both masculine and feminine energy, and we all need both. So the masculine is much more about action. It's hard driving, it's linear, it's get it done, it's decisive, it's about going out and doing. The feminine is more creative, it's about receiving, it's about stepping back and allowing. And I had been so in my masculine for so many years that that was the only way I knew to get results. And I really thought people who took more of the feminine approach were weak. That's just being very candid. That was my thought. Well, as I've studied, um, as I've studied the balances in energy this year, and gosh, there's so many good books on it, but one of my favorite books on it, um, has been the book do less by Kate Northrup. Um, I've really learned about the fact that we need a balance of both. And as I have learned to step into more of my feminine energy, and again, this goes out to my guys too, because you've got it. You've got feminine energy too. We each have both. And you know, probably 60% of my clients are men. So just know you're not excluded from this conversation. It's really just about the energy you bring to your work. Um, one of the biggest things that I have learned is it's not so much about taking action, as taking inspired action. So one of the things I had been doing that I think had really burned me out was I had been so focused on, I have to do these things this same way every day to achieve success. I have to make you know, this many outbound touches. I have to clear each of my inboxes down to zero. I have to work out for X amount of time. I have to do this, I have to do that. And it was so rigid. And there is something to be said, I totally agree with this, there's something to be said with structure, with knowing what your numbers are, with knowing what your metrics are, but I had really cut off so much of the creativity and the availability for maybe there's a much faster, better way to do this. So, you know, Maybe there's one person that if I reached out to them and had the right conversation and they were really who I was meant to connect with at this time, could generate the exact same revenue results as doing these hundred touches that feel frustrating and aren't getting me anywhere. I think you have to have a balance of both. But one of the things that's really helped me is getting still every single day, at the, first at the beginning of the day to really ask, what is today about? You know, even I've got my full calendar calendared out. I know what I'm doing. I do live by my calendar. So I will say that I'm a big believer in chunking time, blocking time, know what your priorities are, have it scheduled out on your calendar. I do all of that. I still use all the structures and systems, but I'll still get quiet at the beginning of the day and ask for inspiration and ask to be guided today in my action. And it's really just a prayer of, you know, today, please guide my actions. Um, let my actions be inspired. Let me connect with the right people. Let me have the right words to say. Um, show me who do I need to connect with? Who do I need to reach out to? What sort of thing could create a quantum leap today that I'm not even thinking of right now? And what you'll find is that you get these ideas that hadn't even occurred to you before, but you take action on them and it, it gets you the same result that you could have spent all day struggling to get. And you get the result in a 10th of the time. Side note, that's one other thing that I decided this year is I'm not available for struggle. And if you find yourself saying, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. Well, guess what? You're going to struggle. So decide to eliminate it from your vocabulary now, just be done with it and you'll find your life gets so much easier. So um, taking, back to what I was saying, taking the pause in the morning, and then the other thing I'll do is I'll do this throughout the day. You know, I'll, I'll get the inspired idea, I'll go do it, I'll take action on it. And then one of the things I try to implement is I'll come back and I'll pause. 
And if I can, I'll go outside and I'll just take a breather. And it takes like two minutes, but it's just a moment of kind of completion of what I just did. So gratitude for what was just done. And then really listening for, okay, what's next? Or if I'm really clear on what's next, how can I bring the best energy to what's next? How can I bring my best self to what's next? How can I, um, how can I be of greatest service with what's next? And you'll find just those little pauses. It doesn't have to be long. Two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, will help you recenter, refocus, and bring your best energy to whatever's next. So you're going to get the best result out of what you're doing. You know, one of my favorite, favorite things, and I just heard this, gosh, maybe two weeks ago from um, a woman named Allison. Shout out to Allison. She's one of my mastermind partners. And this woman has, oh gosh, I don't know her exact numbers, but she's gone from like 40K the first six months of the year to making over 200K the second six months. So if you want to talk about a quantum leap, um, the woman has done it. Follow her online, Allison Chavez. She's incredible. But you know, she and I were on a call the other day and she said, this is one of the biggest things that has helped me is if it feels light, I pick it up. If it feels heavy, I put it down. I was just like, whoa, like what a great guidance system. And how counterintuitive, right? Because we are taught in business, by, through our coaching, through I think just Western culture in general, we are taught grind, push, work through it, blast through it. And I'm telling you, I know this is counterintuitive, but I've started implementing this just in the past couple of weeks since she told it to me. Things get done so much faster. They get done so much easier. I get a better result from it. And it's way more fun, which at the end of the day, if you're going to be spending most of your time you know, in your business, you might as well have fun with it. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's it. And that really brings me to the final piece of the second point is just the importance of having fun. So one of my favorite um, other books that I read this year was Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein. Quick water break. And, you know, I'll tell you, I, I thought I was going to know everything she was going to talk about. So I went into this skeptical, which is totally unfair. Um, but this book, I think I've listened to it three times now it's changed my life. It's changed the way I go about what I do. And one of the biggest things that has changed is she talks about the importance of having fun and that when you are having fun, you are in your most attractive state. You are most likely to draw in whatever the thing is that you want to draw in. You're at a much higher vibration, much higher frequency than you are when you're grinding, when you're pushing, when you're in that lower energy state. And so I've really prioritized having fun in these past three months of the year, whatever it's been since I listened to it, it probably hasn't even been that long. Um, and everything is so much easier. Life is so much easier. My business results come in easier. Um, I've let go of some things that felt really hard in terms of revenue streams, ways I was making money. I was so afraid to let them go. I was like, this is the only way I know to make money. I've made some really strategic shifts in my business and I generate clients and money now in a way that's much more fun for me, much more aligned for me. And if you ever want to know more details on that, I can share in another podcast episode, but it's been transformational. The process of creating the money has been so much more fun and the money has increased. So to me, the proof is in the pudding with all of this. If you're a skeptic, just try it. Just give yourself a month, six months and say, I'm just going to try this stuff. And if it doesn't work, then you can go back to how you were doing it before, but you don't really have anything to lose. So I would highly recommend that you implement some of these things I've talked about in the second lesson. So recap, lesson number one of 2019, everything is happening for you. Lesson number two, you don't have to hustle so hard to get results. And lesson number three, I have decided to make money my best friend, and I would highly encourage you to do the same. So lesson number three is make money your best friend. You know, it's, it's interesting being in the world I've been in for years. You know, I was an executive coach, a sales coach, a sales leadership coach. I'm coaching a lot of entrepreneurs now. Money is so much a part of the conversation. And so you get to hear everybody's money junk. 
And we all have money junk, right? We all have money stories. Um, and one of mine was that I was always, I've always been good at making money. That's never really been an issue for me, but I always, I'd also always been, I would say money avoidant. So I would make the money, but then I wouldn't want to look at my bank account and I wouldn't want to get into the details of my money. And I always had this weird kind of underlying fear that even though it's there, it could all go away at any moment. And I really lived in a lot of fear about this, almost a level of panic sometimes. And, you know, I never really understood what was going on until I started doing some deeper work again, really into energy this year. But one of the things that I've learned that's actually been really helpful is that money is really tied to your security, which is root chakra. So if you study the chakras, root chakra is, it's all about security. Um, it's actually also tied to however you were parented, however you were raised. So whatever issues you have with your parents, and we all have them, that's just part of life. You know, I think we, uh, my personal belief is that we uh, make an agreement with our parents before we come down and they're going to be our teachers for certain things and we're going to be their teachers for certain things. And we learn the lessons we need to learn through our parents and they learn through us. And it's really beautiful. But we, along with that, you know, lessons, there's pain, there's challenge, there's struggle. And so if you start to notice whatever your, if you have money junk or money stories, you'll find they're often very similar to whatever the thing is that you've struggled with, with your parents. So whether it's fear of someone leaving, fear of abandonment, um, thinking you have to work so hard to keep it all together. That was one of my stories. You know, I, um, my parents are now divorced and they're in much better relationships for who they are. And I love my step parents and I love both of my parents dearly. And yeah, you know, there was a fair amount of tension in my household growing up. Um, and I remember I always felt responsible for trying to make everyone happy. And it was like, no matter how hard I worked at it, I could sense deep down that I wasn't succeeding. And this has been a big aha for me this year was that that same story of having to work so hard and it's still not paying off had really tied into my money. And so there's this, this belief of I've got to work super hard for a small result, a relatively small result. Um, or, you know, if I don't do things perfectly, someone's going to leave. If I don't handle my money perfectly, it's going to leave me. Those were really deep rooted stories. And so, you know, I would encourage you to maybe just do some journaling on that and get present to whatever your money stories may be um, and how they're tied in with some of your childhood. And it's actually very cathartic and very cleansing to start to look at what's true. But one of the things I decided to do this year was, like I said, make money my best friend and decide that money and I were going to have an amazing relationship. And, you know, I'd always, I've, I've made great money. I've been a six figure plus earner since my twenties. Um, but look, you can spend six figures really fast. <laughs> so I, like I mentioned to you before, when we decided we wanted to expand our family, it was like, I'm going to be a seven figure earner. So I'm on that journey right now. I'm going to do it. Um, I decided to really elevate my financial frequency, make money my best friend. And part of that was getting out of any sort of financial avoidance that I'd been in before. This was probably one of the hardest things for me. And if you identify as being financially avoidant, you'll get this. I hired a financial advisor, which meant I had to go through everything, what I was spending on every single card, every single month. And if you're like me, you are a great spender. I'm a good spender. I know how to spend some money. <laughs> So I had to really look at the details of all of that. Um, and my husband and I started doing these weekly money meetings. And so every single week we sit down and we look at the budget that our financial advisor has created for us. And we actually reconcile it step by step with everything we spent that past week. And we have a spreadsheet we use and we go in and every week we put in what we spent versus what the budget was. And Look, we're not perfect with it um, by any means, but we are so much more on top of now. What are we spending versus what's allocated? And I feel so much more on top of my money. Um, and that has 
created, it was hard at first to make this transition because I had to really look at stuff I hadn't wanted to look at for a long time. But I found I actually had way more that I could be doing with my money that I've been thinking about. And we've accomplished some really incredible goals with our money in just a year. You know, we got our dream car, we fully funded some savings accounts, we, um, there's, there's a lot of stuff. We've done some great vacations. And so I think I would not have realized that it was possible to do all of those things if I hadn't been in the details. And I've been able to be much more strategic about how I spend my money in my business. Um, you know, even down to at the end of the year, looking at, okay, how can I not pay so much taxes next year? What can I invest in before the end of the year and really making some strategic investments in my business this month in December? Um, to help with taxes. And like, I wouldn't have been thinking that way before this. So if you are not currently at that level of relationship with money, those could be two really good things that you could do. Hire a financial advisor and then get into doing a weekly money meeting, whether it's just you, whether it's you and a team member, you and your partner, um, but really set up some accountability around that. And you'll find that quickly you're going to cut out spending on things that aren't such a good investment. Um, we found Whole Foods was eating up a ton of our money and eating out as I think so many people figure out. And we're like, okay, we're cutting that. And coffee, coffee, we were spending like 150 bucks a month on just Starbucks. And you know, that's for some people, it doesn't matter for us. We're like, we could probably spend that better. So it's not that we don't still get coffee out, but we probably get it out maybe 20% of the time that we used to. So anyway, just getting in the details is going to help you really uncover what's true and what's possible for you. So, whew, okay. That was a lot. I hope that was helpful for you. I'm going to do a quick recap. Number one, biggest lesson of 2019, everything is happening for you. Number two, you don't have to hustle so hard to get results. And number three, make money your best friend. You know, I think if you go into 2020, with these things in mind, with this attitude, with this mindset, um, hopefully it's going to help you really accomplish your goals, whatever those are. So, so much love to you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today for listening. Um, I appreciate you. I value you. I also want to get to know you. So, um, wherever you are in social media, connect with me. I'm probably biggest on LinkedIn, but I also obviously have Instagram. I have a Facebook group, Visible Leaders. I'm at Elise Archer on all social. Connect with me. Let me know you're a listener of the podcast. Let me know what you enjoyed most about this episode. Let me know what you want to hear more about in 2020. I'm totally up for making this whatever would be most of service to you. Um, and of course, I always appreciate you sharing this with a friend, screenshot it, share it on social. If it was of service to you, I always appreciate your five-star ratings. It helps get the word out about the podcast. Um, so much love to you, so much appreciation to you. And I'm just wishing you nothing but the best as we round out this decade and go into a brand new decade. So have a fabulous rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.